Welcome to Home Cooking with Foodland. Glad to see everyone here on Wednesday at five o'clock. Um, I hope you guys all made your Kung Pao chicken and had a great time seasoning your wok. And shout out to Terry. I saw those pictures and that was really delicious uh, Kung Pao chicken you made. I hope you guys really, and I know that you said everyone enjoyed it. Um, I hope that's part of your repertoire now. So um, great job. Uh, today's class, uh, at the, you know, as we think about next, this coming Sunday and it's Mother's Day, what would be some fun things to do for Mother's Day, kind of brunchy items. Um, and today's class, I mean, really, hang on, let me check something real quick. Today's class is really doesn't have, it's, it's really focused on one dish, but I wanted to take the time because the components in this particular dish, I think is one of those items that people are sort of not from not comfortable with and I wanted to show you how to do it so we're going to do hollandaise sauce we are going to make a nice cocktail because you know mom deserves that cocktail um but the two key the two key techniques I want to work on today is poaching eggs and then making hollandaise sauce because we're going to do eggs benedict and those are the two key things that make it special and there are lots of versions out there um and I wanted to show it to you guys so that I really want to demystify it for you so you're comfortable and confident making it. And there are things that we do in industry that really make, make it easy or make it easier. And I wanted to share those with you so that you can do it. At the same time, there are also things that, uh, I'm gonna turn that down real quick. There are also things that classically we do and I wanna show you some shortcuts uh, or hacks that you can do at home because there are, th there are things that I would do in a restaurant, but they're all additional steps. And so if you wanna take it to the nth degree, I will show you how to do those. I'll explain them to you, but I will also show you how to get a really good result at home without having to make, you know, have to use every single pot. Um, we will use probably a good amount of pots more than you might be used to, but still I think it's, it's a manageable thing. So why don't we go ahead and we'll just dive into this thing and we'll get going. Just as a quick reminder, cause uh, we haven't seen each other for a few weeks. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer function in your app uh, and then, you know, the wonderful Cheryl will ask me questions. Um, and she's, you know, she is now a certified culinary expert. So she will also answer some of them without asking me, but just know that because she's a culinary expert, if she says something, just do it, okay? That's, I've learned that, okay? Anyway, so we'll get going, ask your questions. Uh, we'll have fun with this. But I, and the other thing too is I think, you know, like Mother's Day, and the, the reason I wanted to show you this too is because it's one of those dishes that I think people tend to go out for. You're not going to make it home because they perceive it to be very hard to do. And I think if you if you're even if you're a good cook and you cook all the time, or if you're just starting, if you go through the just go through the, the effort to try to make this dish for mom, whatever the results are, I think she's just going to love it because you're going you're going through the extra steps to do something special. So um, go for it. And at the end of the day too, if your deal is just like toasted bread with jam on it, I think you should be really happy too. So, okay, let's come take a look over here. I, um, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn this down again. We're gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna turn some lights on so we can see better. We're gonna start with the hollandaise sauce. And so this is, I have this going because I wanna kind of get this ready for us. This is gonna be for the poaching of the eggs, but I wanted to do the hollandaise um, first because that, I think that one people maybe have the most questions about. So we have uh, eggs, we have butter, we have lemon. I got a mixing bowl and I got a whisk and we're gonna, we're gonna bring this thing all together. Now I've, been, I've had this water, this is actually a really good temperature here. Um, you see how the water, the steam's coming up and there's little bubbles at the bottom. I'm using the heat function on this thing. And this is what you want the water to look like when you're gonna make hollandaise. You need heat to cook the eggs but you don't want it really hot like this is boiling. If you use this kind of heat, you're gonna scramble the eggs. Now, I'm gonna move it forward so it's easier to see and I am gonna turn the heat on here, but I, I, gotta, I gotta keep an eye on this because this burner tends to be hot, but this is ideally what I'm looking for. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna take egg yolks and we're gonna put them in this mixing bowl here. I'm using shakamoa, local eggs. And when you're making this, uh, well, I'll show you when, we do, when we're doing the poaching, you want super fresh eggs and that really makes a difference. But 
We're going to one yolk going in there. I'm going to do two yolks. And you know what you can do is save the whites. You can make use them to make an egg white omelet or add them to a, you know regular. It's just a mix of eggs to make omelet or something. So you can there's you can use these and they don't go to waste. One thing, take a look at those yolks. They're super orange, and that's part of the benefit of these shakamoids. They're really really rich. Okay, now you're starting with two eggs, and typically an egg yolk, if you're going to make a hollandaise, can can take can handle about four ounces of fat. Okay. Now, if I was making mayonnaise, it's a little bit different, different ingredients, but the, the, the method is the same. You're taking yolks and you're trying to incorporate fat into them. Interesting thing about um, a mayonnaise, that one can take six to eight ounces of fat, depending on how good you are. But for us, we're gonna do two yolks and I'm gonna do four ounces per yolk. And that's what I have here, melted butter. So that's two blocks, okay? Now, when you're making a classic hollandaise, you want clarified butter. Which, when, what you do with that typically is you take this butter here, you put it on a stove and you boil it, and then all of the milk solids will, will cook out. And then this becomes very clear. But what I'm gonna do <clears throat> to make it simple for us is I just melted the butter here. So it's, people call it drawn butter, but it's melted butter versus clarified butter, okay? And that's just a decision point that I'm making versus the classic method, which is clarified. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to add lemon juice to my, to my yolks here. I'm going to squeeze some of that in here. I have like a half of a lemon. I took out the seeds. About, that's about a tablespoon, roughly, of lemon juice. And that's going to help with the emulsification. Now, the classic method for making a hollandaise, you want to usually make a reduction. And what you do is you take white wine vinegar, shallots, and peppercorns, and you simmer that and you reduce that by half. And what that does is it, it adds complexity. The peppercorn flavor goes in there. The shallots add some, some more layers of flavor. But I'm just going to use this lemon here because I, like I said, if you're going to do this at home, you could, if you're going to make hollandaise every weekend, go ahead and make a reduction. And if you're a purist, make the reduction. But you know, you're going to do this on a weekend, maybe you do it once every couple months. Lemon juice is perfectly fine. You just need that acid and the flavor from that. I am gonna add a little bit of salt and just a little bit of pepper, which will help with the seasoning, but I'm also trying to add some inclusions. These are, um, we're gonna call them stabilizers. And what we're trying to do here is, first we're gonna cook the eggs and then I'm gonna emulsify fat into the eggs. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create fat into a liquid and, it, and keep them dispersed, right? And so by adding the salt and by adding the pepper, I'm in introducing particulates that get in the way of the, the fat wanting to hang out with the fat and the, and the liquid wanting to hang out with the liquid as it's separating. So that's kind of what that's for. Now, I got two whips to show you. If you got one of these, that's fine, um, use it. But what I have is a longer whip, it's a nice flexible, whip with piano wire. And I like that. And I'm gonna hold it like this, like a pencil, because I'm, I'm gonna be whipping like this. And I'm gonna be using my bicep and my tricep versus, and some of my wrist action, but I'm not gonna be going like that because, you know, it's just, it gets tiring after a while. Now, again, I put this on low. I have it slightly off the heat and you see those tiny little bubbles and just a little bit of steam coming up. That's what you're looking for, okay? So we'll start with getting this going. I'm whipping it. I'm starting to get some air in here, okay? And you see how loose this is, right? Even though I have air going in there, it's very loose and it's very dark colored. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on the, we're gonna put it on the steam. We're gonna cook the yolk. But we wanna stop before they become scrambled eggs. Part of what you're looking for is these will start to turn kind of a pale yellow. Think about lemon curd or lemon meringue pie. That kind of pale yellow. That's what we're looking for. Okay? We're trying to look for this color here. This kind of a pale yellow versus this. See how that how yellow that is? Gradually, we want to get enough air in that and lightly cook it so it looks more like that. Custardy. But I'm starting off by getting some air in this room. Okay? And again, I'm using my wrist. I'm lightly moving my biceps. But I'm very relaxed about this building. 
And one of the things that people always get to do is they get tired because they're overworking their arm. It's all about technique. And if I get tired, then I just switch my hand. Okay, now this way go quickly. So we're gonna start, but I wanna start this. Now you see that we have this little wisps of steam coming up, it's good. I'm gonna put it on the bowl. And notice how this bowl fits. It's not sinking all the way into the pot. This pot would be too big. I want it to sit right on top of the bowl and have this bowl not touching the water. So there is about an inch and a half of space between the bowl and the water. And I'm gonna start whisking. I'm keeping in mind that I wanna clean the sides every so often, okay? And I just keep moving it like this. Aoni, can you use ghee for the butter? You yeah, can. I use it to try it. I mean, ghee is clarified butter, but I just, ghee, I mean, if you're making your own ghee, yeah, but if you're buying like ghee from the store, you got to try it. That's made and stabilized. It just, you got to make sure it tastes really, really kind of fresh and clean. But ghee would work, yeah. It's lightening up a little bit. It's getting lightly thicker slowly. And remember, if you're not sure, you can always take it off. Take it off, take it off, check it out, then put it back on. But I'm going very slow at a very gentle heat so that it's going to take a little bit longer. But if this is the first time you're doing this, it's going to be safer that way. Okay? Can you use a glass bowl? Yeah, you can use a glass bowl. Any other questions? This would take a minute or so, you know. What about an electric mixer? Uh, you can, but you just gotta make sure the mixer this is, I don't have a whole lot of egg in here, right? So the mixture is, I gotta make sure it's getting all the way in there. Did you see how it's starting to thicken? It's doubled in volume, right? When I, when I run my whip through this, it's kind of, it's, it's starting to get more viscous, right? I'm not quite there yet, I'm close. But you see how the color changed from before here? Let's look at it real quick. Remember how our, how it was almost the same tone as the uh, of the lemon, and now it's getting closer to this tone, right? Because of the air that I'm incorporating in there. We're close. This is very close. You see how it's now thickening. You'll also see a very shiny and rhythm. It's kind of the sheen will change. You see that the consistency is also changing. See how long it takes for it to come back. I can I can run it through here, and it takes a long time for it to all back come back together, right? Side. So someone says they have seen some people use a blender and they drizzle the butter in. Have you tried that method? I have not tried the blender method. I know people do that. They use a blender, they use a robo food or a food processor. I mean, those all can work because essentially what you're trying to do is you try to incorporate in uh, butter. Once you cook the eggs, you can throw them in there. I, this whisk is, is not as, it's not a blade, right? And the difference between using, you know, you put, or let's look at it real quickly. You see how it starts to really come together? And you see how, because again, like I'm keeping it like this low, it's, I'm not having, it's not, it's very gradual. And I can take my time with this. 
Now back to the whip versus the blender or the robo coop. Hang on, you see that? You see how it's coming together? It almost looks like hollandaise sauce, right? And I haven't even added the butter yet. Very close now. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here. Oh, let's go in the front here so everybody can see better. Okay, so real quickly, um, back to the question. If you're using the blade and you're, it's, it's really shearing. And so it will work in my experience. But one of the things you don't get the benefit of is when you're doing something like this, um, you might not get as airy and an airy sauce. It'll be a, a decent sauce, but not quite as fluffy. Okay, so now we have, I, I have the warm water here. I'm gonna use it so that it keeps the bowl stable. But you see how, look at that. You see how the, it's very nice and thick. This is what you're looking for. And I, I almost double or triple the volume because I have all the air that I put in there. So I'm gonna, I, the recipe is a little bit, I'm gonna veer, veer from the recipe just a little bit, but I'm gonna add a little bit of Tabasco now versus later. Because I want to give it, um, I want to give this a lot of opportunities to stabilize my sauce. A little cayenne I'll put in now. I can adjust later again, but I want to kind of just kind of get this thing going here, okay? Now we're going to start getting the butter in there. The butter has been melted. You don't want the butter to be screaming hot. The thing about this, the, this, this sauce, right? You need warm, but you don't need screaming hot because if it's too hot, it'll break, okay? So, and then when you start to get to incorporate the sauce or the butter, I wanna make sure that's not too hot, by the way. Real quickly check it. Okay. Um, you wanna just put it a little bit at a time and you wanna keep it moving. See how, how very thinly I'm adding this cream in? I'm stopping, I'm not rushing. And I keep watching it. Put them in, let it, get it incorporated and even out. A bit more. Incorporate it in, even it out. What would happen if you dump it all in too quickly? It'll break. It will never, it'll be separated. And then you'll have to just throw it out and start again. The way you reason you do this is because it, it, you're trying to really get the fat, which is the butter, to incorporate into the yolk mixture. And you, the only way it works is by doing a little at a time. Now, once you start to get a really good emulsion, you can go a little bit faster, but if this is not something that you're familiar with or you don't do often, I would, you're better off going slowly like this, okay? See how it's thickening up now. I'm gonna pull it off. Sorry, because if it gets it starts to get too hot, you can always pull it off. One thing I do want to sorry, I want to show you something real quick. When you're making this, another way, another technique you can do, um, if you have to take it off of the the heat because it's too hot and you want to kind of control the temperature, you take a towel like this, wet it, hold it like this, and you twist it, and then you just throw it down on the table like this, and you create a holding path place for the bowl. I'm gonna start adding a little bit more. This is kind of getting a little thick for me. Like, you see how it's getting really thick? And hollandaise should not be this thick. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start adjusting the consistency. I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice because that will thin it out. And it also adds flavor. At some point though, if I've already added enough lemon juice and I don't want it to be become too sour, I will add other things to it. Okay, I'll show you too when we get there. See how it's thickening up too, you can see it coming together. Now at this point, it's getting a little too thick for me. I, I'm, I want it to be a little bit, a little bit less biscuit. So I'm gonna take a little bit of 
warm water and just drizzle a little bit in there. And you'll see it loosen up. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Go back to adding some of this uh, butter. If you have a um, KitchenAid mixer, that works good too. Um, when I'm working in a hotel and I have to make like 20 gallons of hollandaise for a banquet of 600 people. I'll take an 80 quart mixer, take the whole mixer, cook the eggs in that, place it on the mixer attachment, a huge bowl, and I'll put sternos underneath it to keep it warm. And I'll use the whip attachment to do that. So that's another option you have if you have a kitchen aid. I mean, don't do the sterno, but you can, you know, you can let it do the whipping while you're doing this. I'm just kind of speeding it up a little bit. I want to add a little bit more water to there. Check it out. Going back with the water, with the butter now. See how the, the butter you can see on the edges? That's when I stop because I need to whip it to get it incorporated. So I'm gonna add, now that's all incorporated, I'll add a little bit more. What about using an immersion blender? Can work, same thing though. You're dealing with um, blades versus uh, wire, right? So it's again, it's all about the shearing of the, of the process versus using a blade like this. Now, what's cool about what I did here is see all this piece, what's in here? Do you see the milk solids at the bottom? Technically, if you're making a hollandaise, all of that in a classic way would not go in because you've cooked it all out when you're making it. But some of it's gonna start to go in here and what it's gonna do here in this particular instance is gonna give it a nice creamy texture and it's gonna help clean it out because that's liquid versus fat, right? It's water versus fat. As you can see, as I'm adding it, it's actually helping to kind of smooth it out a little bit, right? Like loosen it up. Is the butter salted or unsalted? I'm using unsalted butter. And the reason I use unsalted butter is because unsalted butter is technically fresher than salted because that salt is a, is a preservative. And I like using unsalted butter because it gives me control over seasoning, okay? So I'm gonna taste this real quick. Tastes really good, buttery. It almost tastes like, I am, tastes like king crab eggs in my head now. A little bit of heat from the Tabasco, plus the Tabasco has vinegar, right? What gives it, it helps cut the fat, okay? A little bit more cayenne for heat. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt in here because it needs it, I think. This just seems like a lot of work. What do you think about pre-made hollandaise sauce? Might come in a packet? Uh, that's, a, that's a personal choice you gotta make. I mean, the question that I would ask, I mean, it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of comparisons, right? Um, if you make a hollandaise properly, you're not gonna have, it's gonna taste worlds apart from something that you buy like nor powdered stuff. You know, it's just, it's two complete different worlds. And so if you're looking for that convenience, yeah, do it. But I think 
Like if you go out to restaurants and your favorite place, your favorite eggs Benedict, and you ask yourself why, it's probably because you're making it fresh from scratch. And so someone, I think in another class, someone asked like the same kind of question, like why do this versus just get, um, you know, do the a bottle version or whatever. And I think that it really comes down to, I would, I would encourage you if you've never made a hollandaise from scratch to try it and see how it tastes and then compare it to the bot, the powdered version or whatever. And if you're, if it, if, the, if there's no difference to you, then go for the convenience. But, um, you know, I haven't tasted one in my opinion that compares to making one from scratch. And like the one I just tasted right now has beautiful butteriness. It's got some nice warming heat from the cayenne and Tabasco, little, 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 peaks from the vinegar, the lemon and the Tabasco vinegar, and it's light and airy. And so I think it's, it's really, really, it's really good. So um, now we're gonna, let's move on. We're gonna come on this side here and we're gonna start working on the, the, the poached eggs. And I have, this is just plain water that I had, um, that I was simmering and I wanna try to figure out how quickly I can get it back up to a boil here. But we're gonna do is we're gonna poach eggs. Let me move this on the side here. And poaching eggs is a simple thing. Um, and I think people that are not familiar with it, 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 it can seem complicated. By the way, I put this back on this, the, just the heating element. I wanna keep this warm. You don't want it to get really hot because if you get it too hot, it will break. But it's sitting here nice and happy and just relaxing. Now this is coming up to a boil. This is plain water, it's about a gallon. Now I'm gonna put vinegar, distilled vinegar in the water. And what the vinegar is gonna do when I drop the eggs in there is it's gonna to help to congeal the egg and coagulate it quickly and pull it together. If you just use straight water, you drop the egg in and the egg will just go like that. And it will not wanna tighten up into a ball. And for a good uh, poached egg, that's what you want. And in, in all of the places that I've ever worked, we're not afraid to put a lot of vinegar. And when you think about what you're getting ready to eat. You're gonna eat a piece of bread that's got toasted but toasted with butter on it. You're gonna put ham on there. You're gonna put a poached egg and then a butter sauce. And so the acidity that's gonna be in this in, in this water is not going to become overwhelming or overpowering. It's just gonna it's gonna actually help the dish. It's gonna add corners and 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 sharpness that the dish really wants to be balanced. Okay. So I'm bringing it to a boil and I'm just gonna pour vinegar in here. And I wanted to show you because I want you to see how much I put in there. And this whole room smells like vinegar right now, which is fine. And that's what you're looking for, okay? Now you can do a couple of things. I'm gonna grab a bowl. You can crack eggs and throw them straight inside, or you can crack an egg into a bowl, which I would recommend you do if this is something that you don't do all the time, because if you crack an egg in here and you get a shell in here, you can deal with it. If you crack it in here and the shell goes in, it might get stuck in the egg and then, you know, you're serving crunchy poached eggs. Now I also have water here. And I have a little empty dish. The water is so that when I'm done poaching the egg, I can take it out and drop it in here. And then that's where I'm gonna hold my poached eggs. And so technically you can make the poached eggs ahead of time, let them sit there. And then when your family comes together or you're ready to serve, you take the eggs out, you rewarm them lightly, and then you're ready to go. So you can do this, you can be ahead of the game instead of having to make them to order, okay? The other thing that's really important about poached eggs is using fresh eggs. As the egg gets older, the, the white wants to just spread. It doesn't hold well. So the fresher the egg, the tighter the egg, and the better poached egg you're gonna have. So I have this on high. The, we're gonna wait for it. Let me just cover it with quickly so I can help it come back to a boil. Any questions so far about where we're at with the process here? Okay, so while we're waiting. Are yeah. eggs are room temperature. Eggs are room temperature. No, these are straight, I, had them, I pulled them out right before we went live, so they're cold. I mean, um, you can use room temperature eggs, but I'll just take them straight out of the fridge. It doesn't really, really matter. Um, one thing I want to say is, so this is, this is hollandaise, right? So hollandaise is, it's, it's yolks with butter and technically a white wine, white wine vinegar reduction with shallots and peppercorns. Now, if you wanted to do something and take that same base recipe 
and you wanted to do like you go to steakhouses and you have like asparagus with bearnaise, right? So if you were going to take your asparagus, blanch that, you could make the same sauce, but if you added tarragon vinegar and then you chopped fresh tarragon and threw it in that same recipe, you would have bearnaise sauce. And that's, that's kind of like the whole thing about classic French cooking, right? Hollandaise is the mother sauce. And then there are derivatives of that. So if I were to take this sauce and add a tomato pro product into it, like tomato paste or chopped tomatoes, that would have sauce Sharon. And you're just, you're just taking this base and then you're taking, making variations of it. So now we're boiling and that's great. I'm gonna crack an egg in here. And even me, look, I look at me, I'm struggling here. See, I got a shell in here. Let me take the shell out. But these eggs are super fresh. If, if you know, you, you should just, there's the outer white and there's the inner white. It's really, really, really tight right now. Okay, this is good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir the water. What I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to, when I drop the egg, I want this kind of like moving so it doesn't get stuck to the bottom. Drop this thing in. See how it's moving around right there? All the, some of that white part, I don't need, I really want. I'm gonna take that, put it out here. You see how my egg came together right inside there? I'm gonna add a couple more now. Can you make the hollandaise sauce in advance? And if so, how soon or late? Let me put a couple of these in. You see how that came together real quick? See how they pull up like that and they went straight up? One more. Uh, the question was, can, can you make the hollandaise the day before? Was that the question? How far in advance can you make the hollandaise sauce? You can make the hollandaise sauce. Um, I would say for food safety, I wouldn't make it for, I wouldn't make it sooner than four hours before I wanted to serve it because you're dealing with eggs um, that are kind of like, you don't want, you know, food safety requires that you have to find something to be food safety, safe for many hours it needs to be over 140 degrees. If I were to take these eggs to 140, this hollandaise to 140 degrees, it would break. So I would make it no more than four hours before I was gonna serve it. Um, as far as making it the day before and refrigerating it, the problem with that would be is that the hollandaise, when you try to bring it back together, it would break. So we're gonna let these cook. And you see, I'm just, you see how I'm turning it down too, because now I don't want the, the, I want the water to kind of slow down a little bit, but you see how well they came back, to, came together. Can you explain what you mean by break? Oh yeah, it would separate, sorry. So then it would look like the yolks. It would, right now this is a homogenous mix, right? If it broke, you would see the fat on the top and the eggs in the bottom. And it would just be this separated, like a broken, like a vinaigrette, you know, like, you, or like it'd be oil in the water, you know, separated. You see how you can see the yolk here? It's still, with, oh, see, I'll put it back in there them come back together. This one's almost done. That was the first one I put in there. But you see how well, how, how tight these came together and it's the acid. It's the combination of the freshness of the egg and the acid that put it in there that really helps start to coagulate the proteins. So how can you tell when it's done? Yeah, what you're looking for is, I'll try to show you when I feel like when I got one that's ready, but it's gonna have, um, right right now when you, when I'm breaking it up, right, it's really like loose, right? It's really like soft and what'll be, it'll start to be firm, but I'll be able to push on it. See like how limp that is right now, see that? It needs to it needs to cook more. The whites need to cook more. See this sounds how it's firming up. This is kind of pretty close. So I'm gonna take this one out and I'll just pop it in the water here. 
and I'm also kind of trimming it right now. You see that? I'm trying to clean the eggs up a little bit. Did you turn the heat down? I did. I turned it down to medium because it was boiling. It was boiling rapidly. Right. Once I dropped them in, I wanted to like, if I kept it boiling rapidly, I would risk them kind of breaking. So I did turn the heat down. Sorry. But you just, one of the things you want to keep doing is keep cleaning the water because what you're going to do is we're going to cook all your eggs in here like that. And that's why I have this dish here so that I, as I keep cleaning it, all the little stuff that comes up, I can put it over here. So we'll let these cook. They're almost done. And while these are they're done, so just, just real quick. So I'm going to go straight from the here onto the eggs Benedict because I can right now since we're talking. But if you were gonna do this ahead, you would take these out, you would put them in the water and it would hold them nice and happy. And then when you're ready to serve, you take them out of the water, put them back into the warm water, heat them up for about a minute, pat them dry, and then you're back in business. So that's how you can kind of get ahead of the game. So you're not like frantically trying to do this all like to the last second, okay? So we'll let those go for a little bit and we'll start to prepare for the eggs bandit. So what do you think about those egg poaching dishes? So you don't have to throw it away any of the white part of the egg and they stay nicely shaped. Um they're okay. I don't have one. And like we've talked about before, is like I try to really minimize how much tools and toys I have. They work okay, but um I mean it's just different. And so like the egg cooks a little bit different. It's really like slowly fry, it's not frying egg, but slowly cooking the egg and you end up with a firmer white. Um, and the egg is, it becomes more, it's just firmer, you know, and versus this, where you're going to cut into it and the yolk's just going to nicely like spread out. And so, um, it's all about trade-offs, right? So I have my toasted English muffin with lots of butter on there. I have Canadian bacon that I pre-browned. I'm going to put two slices on there. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to do... If I were to take sauteed spinach and put them on the bottom and do the same thing, I'd have like I'd have Florentine. Or you could take this and put crab cakes on the bottom of this. Or you could take this and put smoked salmon on the bottom of this. Or I'm trying to think Kahlua pork, you know, that's where you start seeing every crab cakes, you know. So that's how you start to riff. But this is I'm doing classic, right? Okay, let's take this, we'll take this in the back here. I have a towel here just like lightly to dry these off. I'm going to take this one here. We'll put it here because I don't need that one, right? This one's ready to go. I'll pat it, get the moisture off. Let's sit them down on our little ham there, little ham, ham hammock, hammock. Yes, we call that. Put that on here. See, that's the one I cracked. I saved it. Okay. We're almost done. I, I wanted to ask, oh, we got to do the cocktail too, right? I'll do this and then we'll do the cocktail. Okay. Um, so we have that. That's nice and steaming. Now we have our sauce. We're gonna do the nice, the nice glaze of that on top of here. I don't think the I don't think the instant sauce quite does this. That's why you know. So put that on there. See how nicely coating it is. This looks really just nicely, beautifully done there. Oops. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't know if you think I'm patting myself on the back. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. We'll put a little bit of um, paprika for color. And then I have some fruit salad. You know, we gotta, we gotta, can't just make it super decadent. So we'll add some fruit to this, right? The color too. Are you making this for your mom for Mother's Day? I am actually not making this for her. I'm gonna make um, I think they're called 49ers. You've heard of those? They're real thin, gummy pancakes. That's what I'm making for her. 
Um, so here we go. She gets some, she really takes a good pancake house for him. So I'm going to try and do a version of that. She'll tell me, oh, it's not as good as pancake house, but I'll still try. Um, you know, and then we've got some, you know, we got it. This is breakfast, right? So eggs benedict, got to have some bacon, thick cut, got to have, we got to gorge out, right? So we got some muffins, we got some, you know, by the way, so you spend all your time doing this, and this is my shameless plug, you work hard at this, then you buy the fruit salad mix from the produce department already pre-cut, then go to the bakery department, get the banana and muffins and mini um, croissants, and then you have like this really killer deal you got going. Now, when she gets there, right, while you're doing this, you say, hey, Ma, okay, great, thanks, I'm happy to have you here. Let me just, let me start you off with a little, you know, we'll get you going with a little, something to wet your whistle. So we're gonna do a Kier Royale and classically just so, cause I know someone's gonna be like, well, he's not doing it classically. A Kier Royale classically is champagne and creme de cassis. Cassis is a currant, uh, it's a berry, um, but that's, it's a very, it's like, it's a specialty item, but you can get Chambord regu with regularity in our stores carry it. And Chambord is, um, it's raspberry liqueur. So it will, it will do the trick, okay? So we're gonna put a little bit in the bottom of the glass here, about a tablespoon. And then we're going to go ahead and top it off with the, champ the champagne. In this case, I'm using Chandon. This is um, from California. It's brewed, so it's, 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 it's technically um, sparkling wine, because uh, if it's good, you call it champagne, it has to come from the Champagne region of France. Again, I want to show you guys how to open the bottle real quick. So you, you take the, uh, you hold the cages here, you push down this twist, you put a serviette or a towel over the top for safety, and you hold the bottle. You twist the cage to un open, unrelease it, loosen it, okay? And all times I'm, I'm holding it here, then I'm gonna hold it here, put my hand over the top, open it up to loosen, and I'll start to twist and it will gradually want to push itself out. You start to feel it pushing. And if you do this right, you should just hear a light, a light hiss or nothing at all. Here we go. And then you're good. But you don't want it to go pop like in the movies, okay? What does that Chambord raspberry liqueur taste like? Tastes like raspberry Skittles, but better. Okay, shampoo, this is how you hold the bottle, you hold the base, and you wanna just pour it in a very thin stream. See that color? You go till just about an inch from the top. And there's your cure. Now, if you want to go fancy, you can throw a raspberry in there, put some garnish in there. But that's really, you know, the beautiful. The, it's, the reason it's called the Royale is because, by the way, classically, a cure is served with still wine, a still white wine. And by adding champagne, which is a very special, luxurious thing, it makes it royal or royale. So that's kind of how it came together. But here we have Mother's Day this Sunday. I hope you guys all do this. We have Classic eggs Benedict with a little fresh fruit salad. We've got some bacon and some breakfast pastries and a beautiful Kier Royale. Um, any, any last questions before we kind of sign off for today? Yes, Pete wants to ask if you can break the egg open. Are you testing me? Okay, let's see, here we go. Here you go. So there we go. So as we talked, these did cook a little bit more, right? But if you want them to be runnier, you just gotta cook them a little bit less. Any other questions? No? All right, so just as a quick reminder, we'll see you guys um, next June. 16th. Keep in mind, that's not the first Wednesday of the month. Um, I'm going to go on vacation. 
but on top of that, uh, we wanted, we thought it'd be fun to do something closer to Father's Day. So I'll be working on Father's Day recipe. This one's Mother's Day. Got to take care of the dads, right? So um, maybe I'll do a, a bourbon cocktail too for that one. But um, we'll do that then. And we'll see you guys uh, in a in couple plus weeks. And uh, have fun with this. And happy Mother's Day, everyone. We'll see you later.